In this lesson, we are going to cover positive integer exponents. We are going to be working out of section 5.1 in your textbook on page 414. And we are going to work problem numbers 2 through 64 even. To start off, we are going to learn about our properties of exponents in this whole unit. So on number 2, we have x to the 7th power times x to the ninth power. This is the first property we're going to be learning. Um, when you multiply your bases, so these x's are considered your bases. When you multiply your bases, you are to add your exponents, such as x to the 7 plus 9, which would give you x to the 16. I like to tell my students to help them. Um, let's say a, a child and a mother go on a shopping trip and the child puts um, seven of something in their cart and the mother puts nine of that something in their cart. So if they're gonna combine their carts, then they're gonna have 16 items in there. So that gives us x to the 16th. And we are finished with number two. Number four, they're getting a little tricky on us. I have x to the 8 times x to the 4 times x to the 7. Nothing has changed. We are still multiplying those bases. So that means we're going to have x to the 8 plus 4 plus 7. So 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 7 is 19. So we have x to the 19. Number six says we have negative three to the fourth power times negative three to the sixth power. Oops. So on this problem, it's the same thing. We are multiplying and we have two of the same base. That is key here. Notice how number two we had all x's, number four we had all x's. Now on number six we've got all negative threes. Okay. So we've got negative three to the fourth times negative three to the sixth. So all they're asking us to do is to write the expression in simplest form. They're not actually asking us to evaluate. So that would give us negative three to the tenth power. Those parentheses are important. If you were to leave those parentheses out, you would end up only be raising the three to the 10th power instead of the negative three to the 10th power. So those parentheses are definitely important, so be careful about that. On number eight, four to the third times four to the fourth. So that would give me 4 to the 3 plus 4, which is 4 to the 7th. Number 10, I've got 3 times x to the 3 times x to the 5 times x to the 8. So on this problem, they gave us a number multiplied by a couple of letters or variables. So when we multiply three times variables, that is called a coefficient. So we just write that coefficient out in front of the variables. And then that's x to the three plus five plus eight, which will give us three x to the 16th power. So now number 12, this is when it's going to start to get a little tricky. Got negative one third, and for the record, the fraction does not make it the tricky part. Times negative one third times negative one third to the fifth. So every single base has an exponent, even if it is not written. Every single base is going to have an exponent. So here, even though it's not written, this negative one-third has an understood one there. So that gives us negative one-third to the four plus one plus five, which gives us negative one-third to the four plus one is five, five plus five is ten. 
be very careful that whenever you don't have an exponent, it's best just to write that in there just so you can see that it is an understood one. Number 14 says I have negative 3 to the fourth power, negative 3 squared x squared and x to the sixth and all of these are being multiplied by each other. So remember you can only combine those exponents if they have the same base. So I have negative 3 to the fourth and negative 3 squared. So that gives me negative 3 to the 4 plus 2. And then I have an x squared times x to the sixth. Did I write that correctly? Nope. Sorry guys, the six is actually outside of those parentheses. It's not going to change anything for these purposes though. So that gives me x to the 2 plus 6. So our final answer is negative 3 to the 6th power x to the 8th power. And that x didn't necessarily need to stay in those parentheses because there was no negative in front of it. Um, but that negative 3, remember it is important that that one stays in those parentheses. Number 16, I have negative 3x to the third power. I have negative 3x to the fifth power. And I have negative 3x to the seventh power. So I have negative 3x to the 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is negative 3x to the 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 7 is 15. Number 18 says I have x4y times x2y3. They're getting a little fancy on us guys. So remember whenever you see that it's not, that you don't have an exponent, go ahead and write that one in there. So we have an x to the fourth and an x squared. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply those together by adding those exponents. And I've got a y to the first, y to the third. So that gives us x to the sixth because four plus two is six. And then y to the four because three plus one is four. Number 20, I have x squared y cubed x cubed y x4 y2. Remember, we're going to go ahead and write this one for our exponent for that y. So I have x to the 2 plus 3 plus 4 y to the 3 plus 1 plus 2, which gives me x to the 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, y to the 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. Remember, if this video goes too quickly, you can always rewind it and watch a number again. So that was number 20, so now we're going to move on to number 22 on the next page. On number 22, we have 2x to the third minus 3x minus 4x to the fourth. Remember I said that they're going to add some numbers in front of these variables. Remember those are called coefficients. So we're going to do 2 times negative 3 times negative 4. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 4 is a positive 24. And then I have x to the 3 plus 1 plus 4. If you're wondering where the 1 came from, remember if it's not written, you always write that 1 in there for your uh, exponent. So our final answer should be 24x to the 8.
Number 24, I've got 4x squared. Mm, 2x. x squared. And 2x to the third. So we're going to multiply those coefficients. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And then we have x to the 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. Again, I got that 1 from having that x to the first. So that gives me my final answer to be 16 to the, or x to the 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. Number 26 says I have negative 3xy times 5x squared y. times negative 2x cubed y squared. So to multiply my coefficients, I'm going to have negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15. Negative 15 times negative 2 is positive 30. And I'm going to go ahead and write a 1 for my exponent for all of these variables that don't have any exponents written. So I have x to the 1 plus 2 plus 3, y to the 1 plus 1 plus 2. So that gives us 30, x to the 6th, y to the 4th. Number 28 is a very long one. Got x, y, z times x, 8, y, 3, z, 6. Times x squared, y, z. Times x, y, z to the fourth. There are no coefficients to multiply in here, so it's just these variables. So, I'll go ahead and write my ones in for all these. So that gives me x to the 1 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. y to the 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 and then z to the 1 plus 6 plus 1 plus 4. So that's going to give me x to the 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, 11 plus 1 is 12, y to the 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, and then z to the 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. So on number 30, we're going to learn a new property of exponents. So I've got b to the 23 over b to the 18. So the rule when you are dividing your bases, we know we're dividing because it says b to the 23rd divided by b to the 18th. So you're dividing these b's. So when you divide the b's, you subtract the exponents. which would give you b to the fifth. One way to help my students remember this is um, you've always got um, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So I always ask my students that when you are multiplying your bases, 
you think of numbers getting bigger when you multiply. So what other operation do you think of that numbers get bigger? Division, addition, or subtraction? Hopefully you would say addition because you think of numbers getting bigger. So when you multiply your bases, you add the exponents. And then when you are dividing your bases, you think of numbers getting smaller. So what operation do your numbers get smaller in? Well, that would be in subtraction. Okay, um, another reason that this works is let's just say, I'm just gonna make up a problem. I'm gonna make up, let's say, problem number 30A. And I've got b to the fourth divided by b squared. Well, that's like saying b four times and b two times. Well, whenever I divide two by two, you would tell me my answer is one. Same thing goes if I divide b by b, your answer is one. Don't be tempted to say b, your answer is one. Whenever you divide a number by the same number or a variable by the same exact variable, your answer will be one. So if I were to divide these two b's together, b divided by b, we would get one. Well, if I multiply one times anything, I'm left with that anything. So I could also break this b over b to be a one, which leaves me with b times b, which is b squared. And if I did four minus two, then I would end up getting b squared as well. So that's how that works. 32, I have x to the 5, y to the 9, over x, y to the 4. I'm going to go ahead and write the 1 here. Okay, so we've got to look at our x's and our x's and our y's and our y's, because remember they have to have the same base in order for you to work with those properties of exponents. So we would do five minus one, which is four. So that gives me x to the fourth. And then nine minus four, which is five. So that would give me y to the fifth. Now you could encounter a problem. Let's call this 32a you could come up with a problem that was kind of the opposite of this. Let's say um, that we had x squared over x to the five, uh, and then y to the nine over y squared. Well, let's draw x squared x to the five out in a diagram. So x squared would be like this, x to the five would be like this. Well, remember that circle and trick I taught you guys where that would make those ones? Well, notice how we have x to the third because we have three x's, but they're in the denominator. Okay, the reason why they're, the answer would be in the denominator for our x to the third is because that's where the larger number is. Then y to the ninth divided by y squared, to nine minus two would be seven, so that would give us y to the seven. And that would go on top because our nine is bigger than two. Now we're gonna look at number 34. Thirty-four says we have x to the eight, y to the six, z to the four. Over x to the three, y, z to the three. So we have an understood exponent of one for that y. And, oops, sorry, this should be an x, not a y. So remember you have to have the same base in order to subtract your exponents or even multiply them. So I'm going to have, oops, so I'm going to have eight minus three, which is five. So that gives me an X to the five on top because eight is bigger than three. 
y to the five, because six minus one is five, and the six is bigger, so it'd be y to the five. And then we would have z to the first, because four minus three is one. Now I would accept this answer, or I would accept x5, y5, z. Either one of these answers is accurate. Remember that the understood exponent, if it is not written, is understood to be a one, so you don't have to write that one. Number 36, I have 48x6y6. divided by 12x3y. So this time they gave us some coefficients to work with. So 12 divides into 48 four times, and then x to the sixth divided by x to the three. When you divide your bases, you subtract your exponents. So that gives me an x to the three on top. And then that y in the denominator has an understood one, so that gives me y to the six divided by y to the one, which would be y to the fifth. Number 38, I have negative five x squared times negative two x squared. So they've switched gears on us. We're going back to multiplication of these uh, exponents um, or of these bases. So negative five times negative two is gonna give me a positive 10. And then x squared times x squared. Remember when you multiply your bases, you add your exponents. So that would give me an x to the fourth because two plus two is four. Number 40, I have negative three x to the third. There are a couple of different ways you can work this problem. I have found that if I show one specific way, it ends up developing a very serious misconception for my students. So I am only teaching this one way. And that way is that whenever you have a base raised to a power, then you can write that base down multiple times, however many times that power is. So I have negative three X times negative three X times negative three X. So that just means negative three X multiplied by itself three times. So negative three times negative three times negative three is going to give me negative 27. And notice that all of these x's do not have exponents, but they're understood to be ones. So one plus one plus one would give me x to the third. Number 42, I've got negative x to the third to the fifth power. So I have negative x to the third times itself five times. So a negative times a negative is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. A negative times a positive is a, I messed that up, sorry guys. Let's try it this way. These two negatives gives a, give us a positive. These two negatives give us a positive, and I'm gonna bring this negative down. Positive times a positive is a positive. Bring that negative down. Positive times a negative is a negative. However, which way you wanna work it, as long as you find that when you multiply a negative times a negative five times, then you end up with a negative answer. And that gives us x to the 15 because 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 15. Okay, next we're going to move on to number 44. Number 44 says I've got 2x times 
negative 3x to the third power. So that means I have 2x times negative 3x times negative 3x times negative 3x. So these x's are all understood to have 1's because they're not written. So 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. Negative 6 times a negative 3 is a positive 18. Positive 18 times a negative 3 should be a negative 54. Then I have x to the first times itself four times, which would give me x to the fourth because 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. Number 46, I have negative 3x squared to the third power. So that's negative 3x squared times negative 3x squared times negative 3x squared. So when you multiply three negatives together, you end up with a negative answer because a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. And then three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. And then x squared times itself three times gives me x to the six because two plus two plus two is six. Number 48, I have negative 3x squared, squared. And then I have 5x squared, squared. So I have negative 3x squared times negative 3x squared. Because when you square this, you multiply it by itself twice. And then I'm going to multiply this by itself twice. So that would give me 5x squared times 5x squared. Well, we can do this a couple steps at a time. Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. 5 times 5 is 25. And then when you multiply that 9 times 25, that gives you 225. And then I've got x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared would give me x to the 8th. Because 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 8. Number 50, I've got 2x to the 3rd to the 4th power. Times 3x to the 4th squared. So I'm going to write these out. The 2x to the third is written out four times. And then your 3x to the fourth is written out two times. All right, so let's multiply these out. So two times two is four. Four times two is eight. 8 times 2 is 16, and then I've got 16 times 3 is 48. 48 times 3 is 144, and then I've got x to the 3 times itself 4 times, so 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, then 12 plus 4 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20. Fifty-two, I've got 2 over 3 squared. That means 2 over 3 
times 2 over 3, which is 4 over 9. Number 54, I've got A divided by 2 to the fourth power. So I am going to show this one other way to work this problem. Um, but this only works when you've got one term inside of the parentheses. I'm showing you this way just because it's going to make doing numbers, uh, number 64, a little bit easier. So these are understood to be ones like we've discussed. So what you can do is distribute, which means to multiply this four times every exponent inside of the parentheses. You'll find that if you had done this on every other problem that we have done since number 38, that this works as well. So that would give me a to the four because one times four is four over two to the four because four times one is four. Then I would say, what is 2 to the 4th power? And you will find that that answer would be 16. So we're going to do this method for the rest of the unit. Number 56 says, I have a to the 4th over b to the 3rd. I believe it's all to the 4th power. So remember, we're raising a power to another power, and whenever that happens, you can just distribute that four into all of the exponents inside. So that gives me a to the 16, because four times four is 16, over b to the 12, because three times four is 12. <coughs> Sorry about that. Number 58, I've got x to the 5, y squared over z to the 4th. And this is all being raised to the 3rd power. So I'm going to distribute this 3 into every exponent inside of the parentheses. So that's going to give me x to the 5 times 3 is 15. Let me make that actually look like a 15. y to the 2 times 3 is 6 over z to the 4 times 3 is 12. Number 60, I've got 2x to the 5 over 3x to the 3rd. And this is all being raised to the 3rd power. Now, this is one reason why I don't like showing this method is because a lot of students are going to forget that those coefficients have the ones behind them. So if you would like to work this problem like we did all the ones previous to this method where we would write 2x to the fifth over 3x to the third three times, then you can definitely use that method. It's whichever one you want to work. So if we were to continue to use this method, we would multiply that three times every exponent inside of those parentheses. So that would give me two to the third because one times three is three x to the 15 because 5 times 3 is 15 over 1 times 3 is 3 so that gives me 3 to the 3 and then x to the 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. So now we have 2 to the 3rd which is 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 x to the 15 over 3 to the 3rd, which is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27, and then we have that x to the 9. Now we're not finished because we still have two x's. We've got an x in our numerator and our x in our denominator. So you've got to think, what are we doing to these bases? Well, when you divide your bases, you subtract your exponents. So that's going to give me 8x to the 6th 
over 27. And the reason it's x to the 6th is because 15 minus 9 is 6, and the 6 goes on top because the 15 is the larger number. Number 62, I have 5x to the 5y squared times negative 3, x to the third y to the fourth, all being raised to the third power. Remember, these are understood to have exponents of 1 if they're not written. So I'm going to raise all of these exponents to the second power, which will give me 5 squared x to the 10 y squared, because 1 times 2 is 2, 5 times 2 is 10, 1 times 2 is 2. And then I have that negative 3 to the third power, x to the 9y to the 12 because 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12. So 5 squared is 25 and then negative 3 to the third power is negative 27 and then I have my x9, y12, but we're not finished. We can still multiply these coefficients of 25 and negative 27, and we can combine our x's and our y's. In any of these problems, you should always have just one of each variable. If you have multiples, then you know that you can still simplify further. So if we multiply 25 times negative 27, we will get negative 675, and then x to the 19, y to the 14. I got x to the 19 because 10 plus 9 is 9. And then I got y to the 14 because 2 plus 12 is 14. Number 64, this is the last one. And I'm actually going to do this on the next page just to ensure I have enough room. On number 64, I have 6x to the 5, y to the 4 over 5xy. And that's not being raised to any power. And then I have x to the 3rd, y to the 5th over xy to the 3rd all to the third power. So our order of operations tells us to take care of what's inside of the parentheses first. So this problem can actually be done a couple of different ways and you can still get the correct answer. Um, but I'm going to follow the absolute order of operations just to make sure there are no confusions. So these are understood to have all exponents of 1. So I'm going to have, well I still have an, a 6 and a 5 in my numerator and denominator because those don't simplify. x to the 5th divided by x to the 1st is x to the 4th on top because 5 minus 1 is 4 and the 4 goes on top because the 5 was the bigger number. And then 4 minus 1 is 3 so I get a y to the 3rd on top because 4 minus 1 is 3 and it goes on top because 4 is bigger than 1. Then I have x to the third divided by x to the one is x squared. And then y to the fifth divided by y to the third is y squared. And that's raised to the third power. So next your order of operations tells you to evaluate your exponents. So that gives us 6x4y3 over and then I have x to the 6th, y to the 6th, because 2 times 3 gives you 6, and then 2 times 3 gives you 6. So 
So now, when you multiply your bases, you add your exponents. So that gives us still 6x to the 10, y to the 9, over 5. You got 10 because 4 plus 6 is 10. And you got 9 because 3 plus 6 is 9. I hope this lesson has helped you. I wish you the best of luck.